What's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And from 102.3 WBAB and 102.5 The Bone, from the Roger and JP show, JP is on Hoppy Hour. What's up, man? I am on Hoppy Hour. It's been a while. What is this, uh, number three? Is this the third time I'm doing it? I believe so. I haven't had you on for about, I think, two to three years now. And there's a lot of changes that have happened since then, man. Like what? What's happened? And by the way, who are you having on that show that's better than me? Come on. Dude, you're Come the, on, Happy. You're the most honest person I'm ever going to have on the show. I think out of anybody that I work with, it's a tie between you and Kelta on being the most brutally honest the last six years. <laughs> That'll do it. I'm in good company. So what's going on? What are the big changes? What happened? Well, I was dating that other girl, and then she dumped me, and then I did the punch out with Kelta and got back on his uh, good terms, and then I met my girlfriend back in September, and then we moved into a nice apartment five minutes from work about six, seven weeks ago. That was the big announcement PR thing I did on social media that got Kelty talking. Know. Yeah. Friends is quite the lady, Hoppy. I know, dude. I'm a very lucky guy. It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, she's like kind of a nerd in like a good way, so whenever you do get the chance to meet her, it'll make sense. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Just, just, she's super hot. I'm proud of you. Thank I, I you. I feel like I think you might be batting above your. I think you might be batting above your average a little bit. But hey, she loves you, right? That's yeah. all that matters. Well, Ben Swig said it she's best. Not for your money. Oh yeah, we know about that. Ben Swig said it best. Ben Swig said I outkicked my coverage big time. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it, dude. Everything's good, man. Um. Working on getting a show going. Um, I'm going to pitch something very soon. I'm working on it, but I'm doing this podcast, interviewing everybody again. I do a show where I uh, play celebrity news clips and I rant. I'm producing these shows on the weekend at The Bone, and that's going great. Uh, we have a special guest. I'm going to do, do another announcement. This Saturday at 2 p.m. for the Mike O radio show, he wanted me to book a guest and said, can you be a, an executive producer? So I did. All right. Who's your book? Uh, you will find out. I will text you off air, but I want to keep it a secret because <laughs> I want I want everybody to tune okay. into the Mike O radio show on 1025 The Bone. Got it. Okay. I can, I can understand that. That's cool. Dude, so I've known you for six years now, and uh, I feel like when I first met you, I think it was the Roger and JP bar crawl in like August 2015. I feel like you were a more angry person because the JP I'm talking to now sounds really relaxed. Uh, I'm really tired. Um, I wouldn't say I've relaxed. I wish that was the case. I think I've uh, actively worked at letting things bother me a little bit less, but I'm not always that successful at it. You just got me in a good mood. We had two good shows today. Something that I had to do later on this afternoon got canceled, so my afternoon opened up, so you just got me in a good mood. And I've always liked you, Hoppy. You know, I'll break your balls because that's what we do, but I've always liked you. You know that. Yeah, your show is um, a very well-oiled machine. All the shows are at the bone, but what I like especially about your show is that you guys break at the same time, and it's like, man, when it's time to go back, all I got to do is pot up the little button, and uh, Brett's got the sound effects ready and the music rejoiners uh, talking some uh, uh-huh. behind baseball for some of the radio listeners. I mean, it's just you guys are so easy to run because – you can tell that you and Roger have been doing the show for so long because it just flows back and forth. It flies. I think Brett holds the pieces together better than anybody we could have ever asked for. Uh, and I think, yeah, I mean, you know, Roger and I have been doing this thing together for 21 years at this point. I know what he's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. Um, if someone's, you know, struggling to make a point, the other one knows how to finish it. And then it's, yeah, it's just, I mean, it it worked out. I think my, adding Monica to the show and having that balance, I think, um, really makes the Tampa show way different, way different than the Long Island show. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I'm proud of both of them. You know, like we've had success in both markets. Uh, we get good ratings in both markets. So I have no reason not to be proud. I'm proud of the fact that I still get up mostly on time at, uh, you know, for a 530 show. 
that's not easy for me. I suck at getting up early. But, um, yeah, no, I'm proud. I'm happy. I'm very happy with what we do and what we put out there. I find the Monica hate to be fascinating because all she's doing is just being outspoken. And a lot of times she puts out the same opinions that anybody else. Like, she'll say something and everyone hates on her. But then Drew says it in the afternoon and then no one says, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times I feel like people just want to focus on Monica just to hate on her. And when you notice all the haters on Facebook or Twitter, bro, none of them are very successful. You know what I mean? It's never somebody with like a huge family who looks like he's loving life on Clearwater Beach. It's always somebody who's miserable, who's taking a weird selfie, who doesn't like that a woman has an opinion is what I think. I don't know what it is, but I find it fascinating fascinating how much hate she gets when she really doesn't deserve it. She's just giving her opinion. I think that she, you know, I don't, there are some times where I like, she's all upset and I'm like, what's the matter? She's like, I'm so sick of all the hate and this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? We, we, no one called it. Nobody said anything. It's like all social media. And I'm like, I don't go on it. You know what I'm saying? I very rarely go on it. Um, so I don't see all the evilness. I mean, I see some of it once in a blue moon. But, you know, uh, I'm not listening anymore. The show sucks. You got to get rid of it. Yeah, okay. You know, two days later, you're texting, you're, you're, you're sending another message again. So stop it. You know? and, and it's like we get 24 hours in a day and you read some of these messages. I don't know if you have access to the Bones uh, Facebook page, if you, but if you read the inbox, man, people write it perfectly. It's not like it's a run on sentence where it's someone manic. The time they right. take. Like, there's some guy on Twitter named Gary. The time they take to, like, just bitch, man. I'm like, dude, it's just a radio show. Relax. Right. It is really, but listen, she handles it like a champ. You know, she stands her ground. That's the one thing. Even if she sounds like an insane person, she, you know, you're not changing her mind. You're not, you know, she just stands her ground. So I appreciate that. I do think she's a little crazy. No question about it. I love her to death. I love that she does the show with us. I think if she wasn't part of the show, the show would not be as good. Um, but I do think she's crazy. She knows that, though. <laughs> she knows that. We just, we're just very different people from very different perspectives. You know, she has done a good job of getting me to look at things beyond my white guy eyes, you know, and to see it through someone of color and, and, and understand a different point of view a lot of times. And then sometimes I just, shake my head and be like i feel like maybe she got you know maybe a little bit too much time in a coma but she is who she is and she stands by it so you got to respect her i respect her. i have a ton of respect for her now what it's all said and done jp what do you want your legacy to be because i mean you are a household name up in your home market here in tampa you guys are one of the biggest shows in the middays so when it's all said and done what do you want people to say about jp whenever you hang up those headphones he was a dick, but he's our dick. <laughs> you know, like, I just, you know, I feel good that I've been able to entertain people and um, made them feel good or made them laugh or made their, you know, shitty time at work or shitty time in a car a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and maybe we broke their balls or they broke ours. And uh, But, you know, it's just that. It's just that they came to us for entertainment and they got what they wanted. You know yeah. what I've always respected about you, JP? Is there's been times you've been kind of mad when I've hung up on a listener on accident too fast or something mm-hmm. happened. My favorite memory was like, I think the first month you were on air and I was freaking out over a dead guy in the envelope and I kept like yeah. uh, updating the names. No, I kept updating the guesses, but not the name. So you'd be like Johnny on line three, and it'd be like Bob. And you're like, what the hell is Hoppy High over over there? And you were really mad at me that day. But every time you've ever been annoyed with me, you've always sent me a text after the show. And there's a lot of people on radio where they are complete sociopathic dicks on air and off air. And I think that will be one of the things people remember about your legacy is that you're not like that. I mean, you hope so. I mean, I feel like I'm a good person. I'm not always a nice person, but I, um, you know, I, there's people, if I respect you, then, you know, you get my respect. And if I don't, you'll know it. Um, but you know, you never did anything other than, you know, you made mistakes and yeah, I'm going to make, I'm going to break your balls on the air because mistakes can be funny. 
um, and it's all about entertaining the audience. But at the at the at the end of the day, I'm going to also try to build you back up again, and you know, like kind of like the Marines, kind of break you down to build you back up again. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. I'm not a total scumbag. Has it been weird for the show not having like? one person doing phones because it was JR for so long. And then he went to join the soul brother, Kevin show. And now whoever's the board op in the hallway ends up doing phones. Has it been a weird uh, thing for you guys to have to uh, have a new person doing phones every day? Or do you guys make it work? I don't even realize it, to be honest with you. You know, they'll tell me, I won't even know sometimes halfway through a show who it is. Um, Monica will say something or we'll get a reaction or, you know, if it's Gareth, he might hear so sometimes leave me a little message on the bottom. But, you know, it's, uh, and I mean no disrespect, I appreciate all the work they do, but that show is, you know, me, Raj, Brett, and Monica. You know, anything else is extra. So, I, I, I mean, I hope they don't get upset by that, but that's just the, the truth, you know? How close are play, you guys? They don't, play, they, 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 they don't play a big, the, the phone screeners don't play a huge role on our show. You know, it's not like we have a Carmen. You yeah. Know? Do you remember that time I was ranting about my first girlfriend I had in 2016, and then her dad called in and bitched that I broke the uh, flimsy chair they had at dinner? <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, that was pretty funny. And you're like, I also remember the time we. I remember the time we sent JoJo there to me- to measure your penis, and you couldn't <laughs> get going. I remember that one. There's a lot of pressure on you then, though, bro. I'll be honest with you. It was a, that was a lot of pressure. Bro, I've never felt so, like, weird because, like, it's usually easy for any guy, man, and it is what it is, but it was so weird because, right, like, Monica. Lot- yeah. Right. Weary, we're in your ears. JoJo's there. Monica's in the room. You know, there was a lot going on there. There was a lot, so. I remember uh, that night, I think we had a bar crawl here in Tampa, and like that was like the talk of the bar crawl, and everyone, everybody wanted to know about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. I tell you, man, I hope you guys – I love that the state of Florida has been given the opportunity to make their own decisions. Hell, yeah. You know, being in, being in New York absolutely sucks. But, you know, whether you think DeSantis is crazy or there's too much freedom, he's at least giving people the information and the ability to make their own decisions. And I would love, love, love that. <laughs> love it. You know what's fascinating? So I interviewed this show. Um, it's called Humble and Fred. They're like the OP and Anthony of Toronto. I don't know. I found them like 12 years online, and I listen. And I interviewed Humble this week. And uh, they're Canadian. And I didn't realize the whole interview would be him bashing America. And it was kind of a wake-up call, bro. Like, we're not like to cross this globe. You ever think about that? Because when you live here, we defend whoever, Mitch McConnell, Trump, Biden. Like we kind of go, oh, that's just America being America. But do you ever realize right. that like we're not liked? Uh, I've never really, I, I mean, I've heard comedians try and be funny. Like Jim Jeffries, I think, um, who I used to like a lot, then decided to be like this anti-America, basically thinking, Anybody who agrees with the Second Amendment is a moron and that kind of shit. Um, so I've seen it, but I don't really let it bother me all that much. And I haven't really, it, it's never affected my day. Oh, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, I have, you know, I have the ability to watch a Jim Jeffries special or to go see him live or not to. So I choose not to. You know, these guys in Canada, I just probably wouldn't listen to them. They want to, they just let them say whatever they want to say. You know, I, that shit doesn't bother me. People's words don't really get to me, to be quite honest with you. What moment? Their actions that bother me. I feel like when you guys joined the Bone six years ago, I feel like we weren't completely offended over words. But I don't know what happened over the last six years. Do you think there was a defining moment when we officially became offended by words? Because I was brutally made fun of growing up, and I was always told to ignore it, and now words didn't hurt. And I'm a big proponent on it. That's why I can take the uh, teasing at the bone. That's why I can take the right. crap on social media because I'm so used to it that it's not that I'm a broken down puppy, but it just doesn't bother me because I don't have a broken arm. It's right. just it's just words. What moment do you think was when everything changed? Because it definitely changed. I think the minute we started giving... Um, I think the minute my son's... Just, I'm, I'm, at a, I'm sitting in a park 
and I'm just watching my son ride up on his bicycle. That's pretty funny. The chances of that are pretty slim. Um, I think participation trophies turned everybody soft. Uh, I think it started there, and then I think there was a you know a lot of fake outrage with the um, uh, a lot of fake outrage. Remember, I, I think you were doing a show with us, but it was like the Starbucks Christmas Cup. And shit. Yes, I think the media has done a lot of damage, and I think it's, um, the media gets off on fake outrage. And then the problem is, you know, now you have social media, so people who want to be mad, they have a place to go be mad and find other people that are mad and. Or just want to, like, this cancel culture shit. My God. I just want to smack people. I really do. Like, so much of it is just so fake. Like, what was the, what, who was the last one they tried to cancel? Dr. Seuss. Uh, you know, they're trying to cancel Dr. Seuss. Okay, just stop it. Those books were written like, 80 years ago. And oh, relax. My they, thing. They had to put a warning. They had to put a warning in front of the Muppets. Let's stop it. Well, here's the thing <laughs> is they're talking about how Dr. Seuss cheated on his wife with cancer and all this. And it's like, do you realize that a lot of public figures are dirtbags? Like, are we going to cancel Michael Jordan because he was beyond unfaithful to his wife? Like, it's just... How about this? How about this? Just mind your business. Just mind your business. If everybody just minded their business, nobody would be nearly as angry as they are. Yeah. Here was a moment that I think was a little underrated because not everybody knew about the Opie and Anthony show. But for me, man, when Anthony Cumia, I mean, what he said wasn't cool, but when Anthony Cumia got fired from Sirius, that was to me like the first moment where I was like, whoa, if somebody as powerful as him can get let go by a company, to me, that's kind of when it began. Yeah. Well, there was a lot going on there. I mean, I, I know Anthony pretty well, and there was a lot more to that. Um, but, you know, he so once he started doing the, you know, the live from the compound, and it seems a little bit right wing, and then, you know, everybody, you know, God forbid if you're a Republican, you're the Antichrist. You know, it's, you know, Anthony is one of my favorite people in this business. You'll never hear me say a bad word against him. But was I surprised when they let him go? No. Well, I was not surprised. Not in the world we live in now. It's, it's just easier, unfortunately. Well, the thing too, and I want to ask you about this because I was driving, doing my laundry, and whenever I'm doing my laundry, I come up with the best ideas. And I wanted to ask you because I don't have a chance to always listen to you guys because I work a second job and I'm doing errands and that. But have you guys mm-hmm. talked about the fact that Andrew Cuomo is being accused of the same things that people claim people like uh, Trump did, and it seems like it's getting overlooked. I don't know. I'm not in so New York, but no, it just... it's not getting over. It's not getting overlooked. But it's funny you say that you made that comparison because when all this stuff first started happening, my I, I remember being on the phone with my agent, and I'm like, you know, this prick is everything that everybody hates about Trump, but he's just on the other team. He's the same narcissistic asshole, right? He just is. And I kept saying, my, my agent, is he was laughing at me. He don't laugh at me anymore. Because they are. They're the same power, ego, you know, it just depends on whose politics you want to go with. You know, I voted for Trump. I didn't vote for Trump because I think he's a great person. I think Donald Trump was a great business president but he sucked at the people part of things you know he did he sucked at the people part he was great at business he was great at the economy he was great at this other stuff but you know the people stuff and covid destroyed him this asshole cuomo you know he does one thing for everybody else and then you know does the other so he would make fun of donald trump about the women but here you go about the women this guy wrote a book about how great a leader he was during a pandemic, but conveniently leaves out the chapter where he got all those elderly people killed in the nursing home. And what gets me, what's really bothering me about what's going on now with that prick, is that people seem to care more about the three girls that he made feel uncomfortable and less than, and understandably so, they care more about that story than they do about the thousands of dead grandparents and parents from the nursing home that's fucked up what's the that's vibe what's the vibe like about andrew cuomo up there 
it's a, I just, I mean, I pretty much just gave it to you. You know, he's just, he's a, a dictator. He, he thinks he's a king. So the fact that they're starting to strip his powers away a little bit, is, that's a good start. And I hope something happens to him, and I hope they get him out of office, but I don't think it'll happen. It just makes me mad because I'm just your average American, and it just makes me mad that these guys can just get away with whatever they want to a point until they're then accused. It just makes me feel so, like, not replaceable, but it's like, I just don't even want to vote because it's like they're all just scumbags, you know? Well, that's why, I, you know, and, and, and Monica used to get mad at me when I would say this, like, I don't get upset, uh, uptight about who's president. It never affects my day-to-day life. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're lucky because, for, you know, you know, she'll say white privilege or she'll say whatever, but she'll always say, well, you're lucky that it doesn't have to do that. And I'm like, I guess I am. But no president has ever affected my adult life. I think they're all dicks. I think, you know, they, someone does this, the next one comes in, undoes everything that guy did, and then does some more stuff, and then the next guy comes in and undoes everything that guy did, and you're back at square one. That's why there's no forward progress. I don't know much about what's going on, but I do know that I don't make a lot of money and uh, the gas prices are going up, and I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but I am not very happy about that. (laughs) They sure sure are. I mean, you know, and I don't know what the truth of the matter is with that either. I don't know. I mean, it's it's easy to tie the two together, but I don't know if that's indeed the truth. But it is easy to make that jump, and a lot of people do it on social media. That's why, dude, I've got to be honest with you, I have very little contact time on social media, very little, because I just think it's, all it does is make me angry, you know, and I start seeing the cancel culture thing and who they're trying to go after now and all this crap, and I'm just like, just, just, <laughs> I just don't go on anymore. I really don't. Very, very rarely do I go on, but, or I spend any meaningful amount of time on social media. There's nothing good there. Plus, there's nothing good there. It's very easy to get canceled because you're not hearing the tone of voice of things. So I used to kind of like rant right. and try to say funny things on Twitter. Now I just promote my podcast or whatever show I'm board hopping. I am so afraid to give any opinion because you don't hear the tone of voice and how the situation's being Listen, said. Don't ever be afraid to say what you believe, but be informed about what you think you believe. And then if you are, say whatever you want to say and be willing to go and be willing to fight for it. But if it doesn't mean that much to you, then don't say it. You I know, I know that's you've... why I always say, like, if I get popped, it's not going to be for something I wrote on Twitter. That's for sure. Has <laughs> has there ever been a time? I know there were moments like in the mid two thousands where you got in trouble for some things you said, which you can find on Google, but. Has there been a time within the last six years that you've gotten in trouble for saying something on the bone? No, nothing. No, we've been pretty good that way. They just let us do what we do. At least nobody's told us that we were almost in trouble. You know, I think if Brennan, if the program director had something to say to us, he's like him and I have a lot of good contact with one another and there's a lot of mutual respect there. So if we were crossing over lines, he would tell us, but we haven't gotten any phone calls or none of that shit. You know, we just go and we, we have fun. You know, the bottom line is our show is not about upsetting anybody. Our show is just about we, we make fun of each other and we'll point out things that are out there. But other than that, we're just not looking to – it's not what we do. We just want to have a good time. You know, I got three hours in that studio. Let's laugh as much as we possibly can in three hours. Now, for people that haven't heard your show, both of them, where can they find it and why should they tune in? Uh, let's see. On Long Island, we're on 102.3 WPAP and from 5.30 to 9 a.m. weekdays. And then in Tampa area, we are on 102.5 The Bone from 11 to 2 p.m. And then you can get them on the, both the websites. They both have apps. It's free. Um, why did you listen? You want to have a good time and forget about bullshit. You know, you want to forget about all the nonsense that's going on, all the heavy shit and just come in, check your brain at the door and have some laughs. Well, bro, that's it. as simple as that. It's been a lot of fun having you on the show. I look up to you and I'm glad we're friends and, uh, thanks again Hoppy, for, Hoppy, yes. you don't, you don't look up to anybody. You're six foot seven. Literally. No, I'm six, Stop. eight, and, I'm six, eight and a half. Give me credit. Jesus Christ. All right, Abby. Well, listen, thanks for your time, and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you soon. Awesome. Thank you, bro.
All right, be well. All right, bye.